Merry Christmas! Just five days, everyone. Five days. I'm so excited, I can hardly stand it. In fact, as I slept last night, I had visions of sugar plums. Wait, what are sugar plums? Well, it doesn't really matter because Christmas makes me happy with or without sugar plums. You might even say I'm full of joy. Or maybe I'm full of hot chocolate. full of joy and hot chocolate. The last few weeks, we've been learning about peace, hope, and love. Today, we're gonna to learn about joy. Do you know what joy is? Take a moment to share what you think joy is. A simple way to explain joy is finding a way to be happy even when things don't go your way. Even though this Christmas has been a lot different than most Christmases, I bet we can still find a reason to have joy. Actually, I can think of a Bible verse that tells us a good reason. In Philippians 4.4, 4, it says, Always be joyful because you belong to the Lord. I will say it again, be joyful. You know, sometimes the things that are going to bring us the most joy come in unexpected packages. In fact, the fun of Christmas is because of an unexpected package that brought joy to the entire world. Come with me. Speaking of unexpected gifts, I have one more gift here that I need to finish wrapping since I'm running out of time before Christmas. But as I do that, I'm going to tell you a story. I need you to pay close attention to that story. Every time I say the word Mary, I want you to count it and keep track of how many times I say Mary all together. I'm going to use these bows to keep track as I wrap, but you can use your fingers if you want. Are you ready? Long ago, God had promised to send a rescuer. Last week we talked about how after centuries of what seemed like God had stopped talking to people, he sent an angel Gabriel to tell Zechariah and Elizabeth they would have a baby, even though they were old. Their son, John, would prepare people for God's rescuer. Less than a hundred miles away in the little town of Nazareth lived a girl named Mary. one of Elizabeth's relatives. Mary was engaged to be married. So she already had plenty on her mind one day as she received an unexpected visitor. She might have been thinking about what food she would serve the guests at her wedding when she turned to see something that caused her to freeze in shock. A shining angel, Gabriel, stood before her. He seemed to fill the entire room with light. I'm going to read from the Bible, from Luke 1, verse 30 to 33. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will make him a king like his father David long ago. The Son of the Most High God will rule forever over his people. They are from the family line of Jacob. Their kingdom will never end. Mary was shocked. How could this happen? She wasn't even married yet. But the angel assured her that the Holy Spirit would make this possible and reminded her that what God says will happen always comes true. Though Mary was overwhelmed, she trusted God with her whole heart. Listen to how she responded to the angel. I serve the Lord, Mary answered. May it happen to me just as you said it would. And just like that, Gabriel disappeared. The brilliant light faded from the room as Mary tried to catch her breath. She must have felt completely overwhelmed and wondering what in the world she would tell everyone. And what would Joseph think? But whatever comes, Mary decided that she would praise God. 
She remembered how God had helped the people of Israel, and she knew he would help her too. Everything happened just as the angel had spoken, and Mary became pregnant. But before the baby was born, something big happened. An official word came down from Caesar Augustus that everyone should go immediately to their hometown to be counted in a census. A census was just a way for people in charge to count the people and know how many lived in a certain area. Unfortunately, this census meant that Joseph and Mary had to return to Joseph's hometown of Bethlehem. Not exactly good news for a woman who was going to have a baby. Just imagine that long journey without comfy cars or airplanes. Mary would have had to travel on foot or on an animal like a donkey the whole way. Not fun at all. The journey from Nazareth to Joseph's hometown of Bethlehem may have taken nearly a week. Like we said, this would have been a difficult journey for a woman who was going to have a baby, but Mary and Joseph made the trip anyways. They may even have known the prophecy of Micah, who foretold a king would be born in Bethlehem. When they finally arrived in Bethlehem, they saw that everyone else had arrived too. Every guest room in the town was completely full, since everybody had returned for the census. Door after door closed to them, and Joseph was getting desperate. But thankfully, they finally found someone who had a room they could stay in. There was just one problem. It was where the animals stayed. By this point, Mary and Joseph were grateful simply to have a warm space with a roof, even if their roommates were a little unconventional. They settled in, and when the right time came, Mary gave birth to a tiny baby boy. God's very own son, Jesus. Without a crib for the baby boy, Mary wrapped baby Jesus in the blankets and placed him in the manger, the feeding trough for the animals. Exhausted but filled with joy, Mary and Joseph watched over Jesus as he slept in the hay. They were amazed to see how God was fulfilling the promises he had made so long ago. This was just the beginning of God's promises coming true, because that baby was going to grow up, perform all sorts of miracles, and teach all sorts of amazing truths to the world, and then he was going to die on a cross to take the punishment for our sins. Because of what Jesus did, you and I can have a relationship with God and be with him forever. That means no matter what happens in this world, we can have joy because God sent his son. Now that is what the joy of Christmas is all about. Let's thank God now for sending us Jesus. Will you pray with me? Dear God, we are so excited to celebrate Christmas, but not just because of the bows or the presents or the pretty lights. We are excited because we can have joy because you sent Jesus to us. This Christmas, even if things don't go how we want them to, we can celebrate because Jesus came in a way that no one expected he would, and his arrival brought joy to us forever. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We can have joy because God sent his son, Jesus. But we need to make time for Jesus or else we might forget about him. Have you been remembering to take your loops off your Advent chain? There are only five days left. Let's read today's verse together. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Another prophecy, and the Christmas story is almost done, which means it's almost Christmas. But even though it's almost Christmas, we still need to make sure that we are preparing our hearts for Jesus. Let's light our Advent candles for today. 
Today, we are remembering to have joy. We can have joy even when things don't go how we expect. Mary and Joseph experienced a lot of crazy, unexpected things. An angel, an unplanned trip to Bethlehem, having a baby with a bunch of animals hanging around. But they saw past all of that to what really mattered. God had sent his son. They chose to have joy because that one thing was bigger than anything else they were experiencing. Maybe you're frustrated because you didn't get to do your usual Christmas play at school. The pandemic has changed everything this year, and so nothing is going how you want it to. Or maybe it's something harder, like your parents have been arguing a lot, and things are kind of tense at your house. Maybe you don't even feel like it's Christmas. That's when it's most important to remember what God has done. He sent his own son, Jesus, to rescue us from all the hurt and brokenness in our lives. And because of that, we can find joy even in tough times. So today, we're going to light the candle of joy. But first, the first Advent candle is the candle of hope. Jesus is our hope. He died on the cross to save us and give us everlasting life. The light of hope shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. The second candle is the candle of peace. Jesus is our peace. His peace is deep within us, reaches out to friends and strangers, and brings justice to our world. The third candle is the candle of love. Jesus is our love. He is with us always and loves us unconditionally, even when that seems impossible. The fourth candle is the candle of joy. Jesus is our joy. The joy of Christ deep within us can help us reach out to the sad and the suffering and the lonely and it can help us get through things even when they're not going how we want. Will you sing our Advent song with me? Hopefully you know the words by now. If not, you can just hum with me. Thanks for singing and for coming to celebrate with me this week as we prepare our hearts for Jesus' coming. And even though things aren't going exactly like I wanted to this year, I can still have joy. Usually I say that I can't wait to see you next week, but this time I can't wait to see you in four days on Christmas Eve. I hope you and your family will join us that night for our Christmas Eve service, which will be posted on the South Langley Church YouTube channel. I'll be there along with our Pastor Dave and some of our other friends too. We'll finally get to light the Christ candle. 
and remember that Jesus has come. I can't wait for that. But for now, remember this week that we can have joy, even when it's tough, because God sent his son. Got it? Good. Merry Christmas.